And in the same time, the bars would celebrate their culture in Ireland and Wales, there was another slightly different named profession called the Scald. And he would wander far and wide for the lands occupied by the Norse, far apart indeed. And they would tell, tell ancient tales, tales of the gods of old. And there was one god whom the Scalds would venerate over all the others, for he was Brodrick, the Scald of Asgard. You see, each day in Asgard, the doors of Valhalla swing wide, and from that hall pour warriors, heroes of old, and sometimes they are joined by the gods themselves. And on that field, there is such slaughter and battle, but Bragi walks amongst them, untouched, no sword swings at him, no spear point aimed. For it is his stern duty to observe all that happens. And then in the evening, make sure the hall is entertained each night where the slain and the living from the battle are brought back to celebrate the joys of the war. And while he does so, his brother and sister gods in the back of the hall who have joined in this battle they whisper one to the other that Bragi, he has such a wonderful voice, tells such a great tale, but what good are poems and songs when the giants come for us on the day of Ragnarok? And though he is not a warrior, Bragi is struck sore by these words, for he is of the Asgard, and he has the soul of and so he thinks on a desperate plan so that he might give good account of himself beside brother and sister gods. He will put his house in charge of the entertainment for a time and go down the world tree to the dark deep halls of the dwarves, they who forged Molnir long ago. And he would gain a great weapon and with such a weapon give good account on that battlefield when that day comes. And so he did go down, and so he did entertain these greedy and grasping folk. But his tales were so wondrous, his songs so amazed them, that they offered a gift to him. And he said to them, make me a weapon. The king of all the dwarves stood forth and said, yes, Bragi, my hall will make a weapon for you. Come back in a year and a day. A year and a day? The hall of the king. That is the place and the time that it took to forge Molnir itself. Such a weapon would be his. And so a year and a day later, he came down the world tree to that dark hall. And when he saw the covered object they offered him, it seemed strange shaped for a weapon. And when he pulled back the cover, he saw that these masters of metal craft had indeed made a weapon for him. A weapon fit for a skull. For it was a harp of gold. And when he picked it up and strummed it, he knew it would be tuned to the correct chords forever. And that, would he wish it, any ear in the hall would hear the notes that he would please them to. And such a gift cannot be refused. And so he took it up and thanked them deeply and went back up the world tree. He played upon the harp each evening, and each evening, for one full cycle of the moon, the hall of Valhalla was quiet, and that hall is rarely quiet. But the years pass, time marches on, the whispers began again. Oh, that Bragi, such a musician, such a fine-voiced singer. But he will hide with the old ones and the children when the giants come. Songs are no match for them. Struck sore and deep, he went again amongst the people of power, this time to the elves. And there he dwelt amongst these learned folk of lore and these 
musical people, hoping that his song would be entertaining enough, wishing that his tales would be ones that they found pleasing. And even amongst these folk, and he did have that harp of gold after all, he found their respect. And they offered him a gift as well. And after telling a particularly long tale, and as a scald is wont to do leaning upon staff, he raised up and said to them, Make me a weapon. Ah, Bragi, scald of the gods, we will make a weapon befitting of you. Return to us in a few months. A few months was still a sizable time. Hopefully these wooden folk could make him perhaps a fitting bow or something. He hoped for that. And so he came back, and they offered him a weapon. Yes, yes, a weapon. And it would hurt us, after all. He may not practice Warcraft, but Bragi is a god. It would hurt him. But it would be of no moment to a giant, for it was a staff. A staff he might lean upon when he grew tired and weary. But so long as he would lean upon that staff, weariness would leave him. And he could speak long and deep into the night. And should he wish it, when he spoke, those who listened would think themselves in the place and time that he spoke of. And such a gift cannot easily be dismissed. And he was thankful indeed for it. And after giving him their thanks, thanks, he went back up that world tree. And this time, as he leaned upon staff and played upon harp, for two full cycles of the moon was that hall quiet. And that hall is rarely quiet. <laughs> but again, eons pass. Time goes on and on. And the whispers begin again. Ah, that Bragi tells a fine tale, plays wondrous music, but he will be of no help to us at the day of Ragnarok, for he is no warrior. And so, in desperation, he goes where none might think to go. But he is a scald, and it is the rule of all that if a scald comes to your door, you allow him three days' time to entertain, so long as he does not offer you insult deeply. And so he went to Yantai, yes, to the land of the giants, to the hall of their king, their greatest chief. And there he entertained them, and there, even though they had enmity with him, their great chief offered him a gift. For he was able to find enough songs and stories that did not show the giants in a bad light, <laughs> that they were much pleased. Bragi, for what you have shown us, we would offer you a gift indeed. And laying down, both staff and harp, and raising up as mightily as he might, he said, Make me a weapon! And the giant chieftain staggered back, sat back in his seat, and said, But, Braggy, you are, well, we are, uh, no! He bent down to pick up staff and harp in his misery. But he was stopped short quickly by a shrill voice from the corner of the hall that said aloud in this shrill voice, Broggy, I have a weapon for you, the most powerful weapon ever forged. And he looked up to see a bony finger pointing at him, an old crone in the back corner of the hall. But his lore is deep and his knowledge vast, and he knew a tale of an old crone who is rumored to be the mother of all giant kind. Something of a sorceress, so the tales say. And so, he stopped himself. Greatest weapon ever forged, what must I do for this? She held up a sword in its scabbard, and even in its scabbard, he moved without volition toward it, reaching out his hand, but kept, drew himself up, what must I do? Oh, swear a small oath. He stopped. What oath? And then she drew the sword. Strike with it nothing that breathes. I so swear. And then, holding that sword he knew to be most powerful, he realized to what he had sworn. 
scabbard, take sword on hip, harp and staff go with him, up to Asgard, to the hall of Valhalla, where he entertains and plays the harp and leans upon staff even today. Poet Bragi does not know what the gods who whisper in the back of the hall do not know. What that old crone could not know, and prophecies revealed only to man, is that on the day of Ragnarok, Loki and the giants will craft from the heart of a mountain a great beast. And it will come before the gods and their greatest of weapons, Gungnir of Odin, Molnir of Thor, will strike against it and they will be as nothing. And the great gods of war will counsel, who amongst us can face this thing? How may we defeat it? When above their heads will come a war cry such as none has ever heard before. For at that moment, Bragi will realize that this thing of stone does not breathe. And out will come the sword, and down will come the great beast. And though he is not a warrior, and wishing only to give good account of himself beside brother and sister God, that first great strike at Ragnarok will be dealt by Skull. 